This is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And this is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon of laser cutters. I know that might seem like a strange comparison to make, but it'll make more sense in a minute. This is the brand new fully enclosed class one certified 20 watt diode laser from Xtool. And if you're not sure what any of that means or what it has to do with this market leading 3D printer, just hang tight. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know a lot about 3D printing, but less about laser cutting. If that's the case, you are like I was six months ago. So this will be part review, part tech demo. I'll bring you up to speed so you can know what you don't know and hopefully fill in some of the gaps in your knowledge. I'll show you what a laser cutter can do and why the Xtool S1 does most of those things better than the alternatives. Even if you're a seasoned expert in laser cutting, I think you're gonna find this machine quite interesting. Full disclosure, Xtool did send me this unit for review, but no money changed hands and the opinions expressed here are my own. So what are the alternatives? In order to appreciate the advanced features of the X1 Carbon, you need to know what it can do that an Ender 3 can't, or how it makes some of those things easier. In 3D printing, there are hobby machines, prosumer machines, commercial machines, and industrial machines. The same is true of laser cutters. On the low end of the spectrum, we have open frame hobby diode lasers with power in the 5 to 40 watt range, which makes them best suited for cutting thin sheets of wood or plastic. On the high end, we have fully enclosed CO2 lasers with power in the 100 watt range. These are capable of cutting through thick sheets of wood or plastic and some types of metal. These machines are highly capable, but they have a large footprint with a price tag to match. One step down are what I'm calling the commercial machines, things like the Glowforge or the Xtool P2. These use a CO2 source for laser generation and have value added features like built-in Wi-Fi and remote camera monitoring. These have a median price tag of 6,500 US, so they're out of the range of most consumers. Until now, the prosumer category of lasers, as I'm defining it, didn't really exist. Even the cheapest commercial grade CO2 laser would run you at least 2,500 US dollars. Then comes the Xtool S1. This combines the affordability of the hobby diode lasers with the advanced features of the commercial CO2 lasers, meeting somewhere in the middle price-wise at 1,600 US dollars for the 20 watt version. It's the first of its kind. Until now, diode lasers were all open frame machines and enclosed machines all used a CO2 or a fiber source. The diode laser technology is more economical, but has historically been less capable. In recent years, laser power on diode machines has increased from 5 watts all the way up to 40, not far off from their 50 watt CO2 counterparts. At face value, a laser cutter isn't all that different from a 3D printer. One adds while the other subtracts, or more specifically, one extrudes while the other vaporizes, but otherwise they are quite similar. There's a motion system, a tool head, a control board, and dedicated software for file preparation. The S1 tool head is interchangeable. You can choose from a 20 watt laser, a 40 watt laser, and a two watt, 1064 nanometer laser. The 40 watt adds more cutting power, allowing you to cut deeper, quicker. The 20 watt laser will require more cutting passes to achieve the same depth of cut, or slower speeds to achieve the same darkness of engraving. This engraving power test is like the Benchy of the laser cutting world. The 2 watt module provides a laser beam in the infrared range. This is in contrast to the 455 nanometer laser of the 20 watt and 40 watt modules. The infrared light gives a better engraving effect on metal and plastic. Depending on what you intend to cut or engrave, it's important to consider the limitations of the laser source. Diode lasers are only capable of cutting dark colors of acrylic, and they struggle to cut metal at all. CO2 lasers are more versatile. So this is an important limitation to consider when evaluating a diode laser like the S1. All right, back to our 3D printer analogy. When we consider the conveniences of the X1C versus the Ender 3, it's things like automatic bed leveling, remote camera monitoring, LiDAR flow calibration, and AI failure detection. Each feature helps alleviate an inconvenience. Manual bed leveling, having to physically go to the room to check on the printer, having to interpret linear advanced flow patterns, and waking up to a plate of spaghetti. If you've never worked with a laser cutter, you won't have the same sense of appreciation for how the advancements of the S1 improve the ease of use. So let me walk you through the normal workflow for a hobby diode laser. Step one, place your workpiece in the build area. Adjust the focus of the laser by manually adjusting the head position up and down. Use the frame feature to perform a dry run of the engraving, attempting to judge where the design will be placed. 
adjust the workpiece or the design incrementally until the two coincide. Put laser safety glasses on. Ensure nobody else is in the room. Hit run and hope for the best. Inspect the workpiece to determine if the design was placed as intended. More often than not, it isn't. This can be improved by using a purpose-built jig, but that requires making an additional cut. More on this later. And finally, open the door to clear out any fumes that have accumulated. Now here's the workflow for the S1. Place your workpiece in the build area. Use the autofocus system to automatically measure the thickness of the material and adjust the height of the laser accordingly. Use the marking feature to determine the location of your workpiece. Adjust the design accordingly. You can use the framing feature as a sanity check, but it's no longer critical. Close the lid and hit run. No safety glass is required and no opening of doors. The built-in exhaust fan and hose can be used to vent the fumes out a window, at least in theory. More on that later. So it's the same number of steps, but the workflow on the S1 is safer, easier, and more consistent. Notice that during the marking procedure, we manually move the tool by hand without needing to rehome the axes afterwards. This is because in contrast to your average 3D printer or laser cutter for that matter, the S1 has closed loop steppers. It has a few other party tricks too. Using the touch probe, it can generate a mesh of points on the surface, enabling curved surface engraving using dynamic autofocus. Does this look familiar to anyone? Other features include an LED light bar inside the enclosure and flame detectors throughout. Files can be uploaded wirelessly on a 2.4 GHz network from the Xtool Creative Space software on a tablet or on a desktop computer. You also have the option of using the industry standard Lightburn software. A variety of accessories are available for the S1, including an automated air assist unit and a fire extinguishing system, both of which can be connected to the expansion ports at the back of the machine. This honeycomb panel is also optional hardware, with the machine coming standard with a pack of risers. The air assist helps prevent burning to yield a cleaner cut. And yes, we are trying to prevent burning. The laser vaporizes the material. Burning is just a side effect. The honeycomb panel provides better support for smaller pieces and it helps with smoke dissipation. If you're interested in engraving cylindrical objects like cups or tumblers, you'll also need to pick up the optional rotary engraving kit. Unfortunately, the clearance height of the S1 is insufficient to accommodate the rotary attachment without also adding the riser base. So you'll need to pick that up while you're at it. So that's the marketing spiel. Let's see how it works. I had fun cutting and engraving a variety of projects with the S1 using the supplied sample pack of materials. Many of these were a first for me, so I was definitely learning as I went. It's safe to say I misunderstood the assignment when it came to using this laser marking paper to engrave on glass. Eventually, I did realize that you aren't supposed to cut right through it, and you need to remove the backing before applying it to the glassware. The laser marking paper is required for engraving glass because otherwise the laser would pass right through. In my testing, the marking system worked well, with the design always being placed as I intended. This method of determining workpiece location, while more convenient than the manual method, is less convenient than having a built-in camera. Unfortunately, the S1 does not have one, unlike the P2, which does. I used Xtool Creative Space for all of my projects. It was convenient and intuitive to use, but it was missing a few of the features I was used to from Lightburn. Most notably, it didn't automatically color code the lines to differentiate between engraving and cutting and it also wasn't generating time estimates, so I had no clue how long a job would take to run. The lid must be closed for the job to start. If opened, the laser will automatically turn off. When cutting, the exhaust fan kicks on to help dissipate the fumes inside the enclosure. Unfortunately, in my testing, it turned off prematurely, before all of the smoke was evacuated, leaving some lingering in the chamber that would enter your environment whenever you open the lid. My hope with the S1 was that because of the exhaust fan and hose, I could use it indoors and not need to relegate it to the garage. The hose wasn't quite long enough to reach my window, but I positioned it about a foot away with the secondary exhaust fan in the window to boost the flow. This wasn't the ideal configuration, but I thought it might be good enough. Unfortunately, in my testing, the air quality in this room took a nosedive whenever the laser was cutting. Perhaps it would have been better if the hose could have reached the window, but I'm not confident that this will be suitable for indoor use especially with the exhaust fan shutting off prematurely. So for now, this is gonna have to go in the garage. The fumes from a laser cutter are much more toxic than those from a 3D printer. So it's not enough to filter it through carbon and blow the air back into your room. Overall, my experience with the Xtool S1 was very positive. It's a big step up from the hobby diode lasers I had been used to using in the past. There are a variety of technological advancements and quality of life improvements that make this machine a joy to use. 
If you're interested in picking one of these up, please consider using my affiliate link in the description down below. While you're down there, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. I hope you found this video informative, or at least entertaining. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing and laser cutting. Bye now.